In your suite. Find Kerrigan. As always, one of the big, or perhaps the biggest attraction of, of Gamescom is the Blizzard booth. Um, partly because you usually stay away from E3, so everyone sort of focuses in to get here and see the game. And of course, very popular in Ger with German gamers, uh, all the three uh, major uh, Blizzard franchises. But we're here to talk about the next sort of iteration of, of, of StarCraft II. And, and just, just to give us an overlook, sort of what you want to do different with, with this installment of, of the game and sort of build on what you've already have. Sure. Start with Davey. Uh, so on the multiplayer side of things, uh, we really want to um, keep the existing strategies vi as viable as possible while introducing new stra strategies, uh, brand new units, um, brand new, new ways to play. Um, so um, in order to do that, we actually located holes that um, Wings of Liberty has and using the new units we try to fill those holes. Um, so um, we're actually in the final um, tuning phases of balance for the beta. So during the beta we'll make sure to like really look into the various strategies that pro players are using um, that um, players across all skill levels are using so that we can actually um, fulfill our goal. And on the campaign front, you know, we're switching over to the Zerg campaign, focusing on Kerrigan specifically. She's playable on the missions. There's 20 missions, kind of span a lot of new environments and a lot of really cool new game mechanics across them all. So a lot of fun there. Of course, we also have uh, the whole online component of StarCraft II, things like the arcade that we just added for our 1.5 patch. We're building on that. You know, there's new ways to find and play custom games that both the mod making community and Blizzard has made. Uh, you know, we're adding cool new features like unranked play to the game. Uh, we're also adding clans and groups for uh, Heart of the Swarm, so a lot of really cool new stuff coming up. You know, ways to enjoy the game more. You know, add add on some features we already had, and then brand new features as well. So I mean, it's got to be a little bit challenging because the the first game was so successful, and pl pl players are investing so much time in it. Sort of, how do you sort of do you want to convince players to jump board, or or, or do you want to you know have players play these games in parallel, or do you think that you know, Heart of the Swarm will just overtake it in terms of multiplayer. Um, I think in the past, uh, with like War 3 or StarCraft 1, we've seen that players just tend to just go on to the expansions. Mm. So we're kind of expecting a similar sort of thing, but um, it's really up to the players and it's really up to the tournament organizer, organizers to uh, really figure out which game that they prefer. So um, we will continue supporting Wings of Liberty. Um, so. So we will do our best to support both products, but it's really up to the players and it's really up to, um, yeah, the tournaments. So if, if you move into the specifics, are there any sort of specific things that you, you're very excited about bringing into this sort of StarCraft II experience with the multiplayer this time? Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of cool new units going in. Um, so for example, on the Protoss side, I really like the Oracle because Oracle is a new harassing unit, but it's a harassing unit that doesn't focus around killing workers. And in Wings of Liberty, all the harassing units actually harass by killing workers. And that uh, difference, I think, is pretty cool. Um, and on the Terran side, um, a lot of the games we see um, bio, mostly bio, biological units being utilized, uh, barracks units. So we've actually added two new units, the Battle Hellion and the Warhound, to the factory. So we're kind of hoping to see much more variety in terms of strategy choice for the turn players. Um, yeah. And, and of course, we touched on the Protoss, the Terran, but I guess the big thing is going to be the Zerg with this expansion and the campaign. Um, what is it about, what, what do you want to change about the Zerg this time around? Well, in the campaign side, I mean, we're, we're exploring the Zerg like we never had before. And unfortunately, we've kind of, we've kind of dis, disconnected the campaign mechanics from the multiplayer as well. So we get to do a lot of fun, crazy things in the campaign that we can't carry over into multiplayer. Um, you know, we're doing fun things like Kerrigan herself. She's playable on the missions. She can be upgraded. She, she kind of gains new abilities as you go along. and You can kind of mix and match them. So kind of every playthrough for the missions can be kind of different depending on how you equipped Kerrigan. In the same respect, uh, the actual Zerg army is upgradable along the way while you're playing through the campaign, and then you hit specific 
um, points in the missions where you can actually split units off and like for something like a baneling, you get to choose between a uh, splitterling, which is a baneling, which when it explodes, it spawns two smaller banelings, which go on to kill things, or the raptor, which is a baneling that can actually jump and land on things and explode. So a lot of really cool, kind of unique things to do in the single player side. Um, and again, on the multiplayer side, new units and abilities getting added in there as well. So, so how would you de describe Kurgan? Is it, is it sort of like a, a hero role type um, unit that, that you're adding? Yeah, she, she really does play like a hero. She's, like I said, she's on the missions, you're controlling her, you're in, she's in the mix with your army as well. So, you know... Um, so it's, it, this is like the, the Warcraft 3 of the Starcraft franchise in that sense. There's some similarities there in terms of that you have your one hero that you're carrying forward, but it definitely still feels like Starcraft 2. Big armies, um, lots of, you know, big selection, uh, a lot of control uh, involved, so, yeah. So, if you're looking at the sort of the, the eSports scene right now for Starcraft 2, sort of, what what are your impressions of it right now and, and sort of it, how how much does that inspire you what what players are, are sort of how the the taxes have evolved over over the years and how that inspires you for 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 the next game yeah so i think uh, esports is going really well right now um so for example there's a lot of uh, uh tournament organizers organizers that are running tournaments worldwide uh, we have our WCS going right now. Uh, we just finished all of Europe's uh, qualifiers, and there's going to be the finals happening next month. Um, and the Grand World Finals will be in Shanghai in November. So I think the um, I think the uh, esports in general is growing, um, so, which is re really cool to see. And as for the players themselves, I think just seeing the players execute strategies that um, are very difficult and. Um, that we couldn't really think of uh, when we were actually making the game. Um, so I think using that, we have a better understanding going into Heart of the Swarm, um, and we have a better, um, I guess we can foresee how the people will, how the pro, pro players will use the new units. Um, so I think that kind of helps in that way. And then, and just when we're coming up with new units, we're just always thinking about how will this unit be used at the pro level? Um, how would pro players incorporate uh, these new units to existing strategies and so on. So um, it'll be pretty exciting in the beta to see uh, what pros come up with. I'm sure that any any preconceived notions will be blown away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. So uh, you talked about being close, uh, pretty cl closing in on beta right now, and sort of sort of tuning that sort of thing. What's what's the time schedule ahead for for Heart of the Storm? Storm. Um, we don't know yet. Um, we're actually just polishing right now, so we do know that we're close to the beta, but as we get into the beta and during the beta, we'll um, learn more, so I think we're just going to go from there. Just the normal sort of blizzard, keeping it sort of until it's done. Yeah, we're just, yeah we'll just keep polishing it and uh, keep making tweaks until it lives up to our expectations and those of the fans. So. So, so if we if we take a step outside and see, what, what, what are players experiencing out, out here on, on the show floor? There's a multi multiplayer build of Heart of the Swarm is here for them to play. So um, this, this build actually is um, it's a build that we showed at MLG Anaheim a few months ago. Um, and so there's been a few changes since then, uh, but a lot of the core units are still there that are going to carry forward into the beta. So it's a pretty good representation of where multiplayer has been as of late. Are they getting their hands on with all the new multiplayer units? or? Yeah, and we're really looking forward to the feedback that we're going to get uh, from GamesCon. Right. So, best of luck with the rest of uh, development and uh, whatever's next after this. I guess there's a third game coming after that, so you got plenty of plenty of work to do. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Vengeance shall be mine.